Thank you, Ken Corla. And can I start by thanking um, Labour for bringing forward um, this particular um, motion today and also acknowledge the fact that it, your support to me as Minister for State in my role as Minister for Disabilities. And I want to also acknowledge Minister Gorman, who has been here for the entire duration, to support me here today. So, um, on reflection, just before I began, I went over my diary to see how I'd spent the last month. Um, I think just to colour it and put it in context as to what I am doing behind the scenes. So I've met with Fuss, as I am, Bernard Gloucester, nine disability managers. That was nine separate meetings of the disability managers. I met with all the leads of the CHO4. Um, I have met eight times with the department, Bernard O'Regan and Yvonne O'Neill in the last month as well. I have met with the Taoiseach along with Minister O'Gorman to set out priorities um, for the upcoming budget. Uh, and also, I have met individually with numerous, numerous TDs in relation to your own issues that you bring before me. So, as you are, will now be aware, I have been focusing a lot of energy over the recent months on increased investment into disability capital projects, which outside the congregation has been lacking. And I see Deputy Kelly in front of me, and I know you were instrumental in ensuring that utterance was on the capital plan when you were in this side of the house, and still there, believe it or not, but it's still at an appraisal stage and not moving. We know for many of our services are at near our capacity, so for me it's crucial that there is increased investment in supports and services that will ease pressure on families. What I've learned over the recent years is the pace of development of such services has been frustratingly slow. Through my monthly meetings with the disability, the nine disability managers around the country, the areas in need of investment has become very, very clear. And I have also met with wonderful organisations right around the country that has shown me that how they can add capacity to the system to help deliver for families to ease the pressure um, the HSE is under. These are shovel-ready projects that can add capacity, but I find the current system too clunky to allow for fast delivery. However, I am working with Bernard Gloucester and his team to help deliver on these as soon as possible. And I re remain optimistic under Bernard's leadership that we will see delivery in this area. And when I talk about what are shovel-ready projects, I think it's important for me to share with you some of my ideas. I talk about the equine therapy in Canturk. I talk about sensational kids in Kildare. I talk about Neurodiversity Ireland in Sandymount. And I talk about Rainbow Club in Cork. They're already supporting kids. When I talk about Rainbow Club, they're already supporting 1,150 kids on a weekly basis, giving interventions. They need more support. And I need the HSE to move away from their model of what they think is actually working to a more inclusive model of participation in the community. As part of this work, I will be holding roundtables with providers before the end of the Dáil term to discuss the issues of investment in respite and residential and how we can deliver more capital projects to boost capacity as well as what the providers see as the roadblocks on the delivery. And every one of the disability managers tell me that they need and have made applications to national office for more respite houses and more residential houses. And it's really... They talk as well about the impact of COVID, and like in CHO2 alone, there is a need for six residential houses for children under 18 years of age. Respite, and I think it's important to say that I make those comments in the context of the fact that I have a large, uh, that the three large budgets provided funding for a major upscaling in respite nights available to children. In 2021, 5 million funding an additional 10,400 additional respite nights through either new services coming on stream or a expanding the current assets. In 2022, €9 million Euro saw the establishment of three additional specialised centres, one for Padderwilly and two others to provide high support respite for children and young adults with complex support needs. And these are expected to provide 4,000 nights. And then the other seven services will provide 9,000 408 nights in a year. This year, another five additional respite services will come on stream, while we will also increase one service from part-time to full-time to provide 7,800 nights. So in all, in my last three budgets, I have delivered 31,000 nights added into the system. So needless to say, my frustration when I listened to RTE and Pascal Sheehy's report last Sunday 
my frustration to hear that there is 10 beds not in operation. My understanding is that there should be no idle bed when we have families in crisis. So I have um, written to the HSE and I have made a suggestion in the interim to ensure that we can provide support. And I talked to the Carrig Alliance space in particular, where children do not fall under any particular patronage. And I had this conversation with all the leads, to be fair, in CHO4. What I have made in my suggestion is that they need to immediately stand up um, agency nursing to put in to the 10 beds until such time as they, the providers themselves are allowed the funding to stand up those beds. And whatever rate needs to be paid, they need to be stood up at that rate that no family should be left in the cases that is being presented here today. So those 10 beds are what the lead agency said to me is that they needed 74 staff immediately. And I think the HSE knows the ask and they need to, de to deliver on that. In relation to Deputy Smith, in your opening remarks, you talked in relation to the, uh, ass the assessment of needs uh, and the, the list that is there that I thought I had cleared, and I had cleared, but it has all grown back up again. I have a proposal myself and Minister Gorman, have a proposal um, given to the HSE where I want to have a minimum of six regional assessment units stood up. And the reason I want regional assessment units stood up is that when every child is assessed, that there is a, a round table liaison that will work together and we will have somebody from CAMS and we will have somebody from primary care and you would have somebody from education. I, I see you there now. I, I, I'm sharing time with Deputy Moynihan. Um, um, and that we would then be able to find the proper pathways back into where the child need that services. So those regional assessments would be a combination of public-private, but that is to ensure that we get a correct delivery of assessment then the assessment would be liaised out correctly so the child returns to the proper team and the teams that are there, we allow them to build up the capacity to do a direct intervention. What I will say today on the floor of the Dáil as I sit down is that if that is not done by the 1st of August, I will take to budget what you have suggested here today, that we will fund the families. So I'm giving the time to the HSE to act on the ask and I am supported by the senior minister on that. But for once and for all, we put the parent and the child first. And that is what I will be doing. And at this stage, I should hand over to Deputy Moynihan. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'd like to, uh, to thank the minister and thank her for, her for sharing the time, but also to thank her for her fortnightness and the way she has been dealing with the issues uh, right across the spectrum and the way she has uh, tackled the system because the system needs to be tackled. I suppose there's a, there's a number of issues. You